Welcome to this quick demonstration of the Tomo Trackbox program. Tomo Trackbox is an experimental program in Eman2 designed to help you explore tomographic tilt series. Uh, you would normally use it with an aligned tilt series as would be produced by, for example, iMod, uh, but technically you could use it with uh, roughly aligned tilt series directly from the microscope as well. The program is new, uh, it's still experimental, so it's not part of the binaries directory. So when you want to execute it, you have to find it in the examples directory like this. And simply pass the name of your fi the file containing your tilt series. And in this case, uh, my tilt series was recorded with a, a dark protein on a lighter colored background, uh, and Eman prefers it the other way around, so we specify the invert option, and that'll make the, the protein particles white. Now after we run the program, we'll see two windows appear. We'll see one window containing image data and another window, let's bring it to the front here, containing a control panel. Now in the standard way in Eman 2, you can use the right mouse button to pan and drag around the tilt series image. If we want to look through the rest of the tilt series, we can use the up and down arrows to scroll through images in sequence. Now note that it's not actually reading these images into memory while this is happening, uh, or rather it is, it's reading them to memory when you press the button, rather than reading the entire tilt series into memory and holding it there. Uh, this is so that the program will run nicely on machines with less memory, uh, but you'll note that it may cause delays on your machine if it's not very fast. So let me find a nice isolated particle. I'm going to use the left mouse button and drag out a box, starting in the center of the particle around the particle, leaving a nice margin on the edge. As soon as I let go of the mouse button, you'll see some text starting to appear in the window, and then we'll see another window appear. And this window will contain the boxed out tilt series of that particle. Now you'll note it's not very well centered. And if we go over to the main window, you'll note that we can also scroll through the box and we can see where the, the box is in each frame in the tilt series. And you can see that it's losing tracking there near the edges of the, uh, uh, of the tilt series. So there's an option here in the control panel which says center align, and this will align discrete objects fairly well in the center of the box. Now if we go through the tilt series, we'll see that that particle is fairly well centered in the box until we get near the end of the series. So you can see it's starting to get confused somewhere right here for the last few slices. Uh, but that's okay, we'll just leave it, with the, leave it like that for the moment. Uh, so then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do a 3D reconstruction of that particle. So I'm going to go up to the control panel again and click 3D Normal. And that's just going to do a standard Eman style uh, direct Fourier inversion reconstruction. And you can see we get three new windows appearing after doing this. Uh, one of the windows, the one that says 1 out of 140, contains the actual 3D reconstruction as a series of slices. And again, I can th scroll through these slices and look at the reconstructed particle. The window that has 1 out of 3 written on it contains orthogonal views of that particle. So I can use the arrows on this to look at, so this is the view from the top, this is the view that doesn't have any missing wedge. This is the view that has the missing wedge as a wedge, and then this is the, the bad view, the view where there's just a line of information along the center of the particle. Okay, but we can see that this looks pretty well. It's a fairly uh, well-defined particle, and in fact, we look here at the 3D reconstruction itself, uh, and if we want to bring up a control panel for this again, we can use the middle mouse button on most machines, or on Macs, we have to uh, hold down the Alt button and click. Um, That'll pop up a nice 3D control panel. We can play with the isosurface threshold. We can rotate our particle around. We can see, and it looks very much like a virus particle. It's quite good. Uh, now, we might want to filter it a little bit. So you can see there's this filter slider available in the control panel here. Uh, now, it starts being turned off, uh, but as soon as I slide it away from that point, it will be very heavily filtered and become less and less filtered as I slide it more to the right. Now, if I slide it somewhere into here, something like that, uh, we can see our particle pretty nicely. You'll note it filters all three of the views. It filters the projections, the, uh, the slices, and the, the reconstruction. So very now we have a very nice, well-defined virus particle here. Um, now, there are a couple of other options as well. Since the missing wedge is such a problem, there are variants of the 3D reconstruction strategy that we can use. Uh, they're a little bit slower, but they, they can sometimes produce better results. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this from zero to 2, for example, and then press 3D Normal again. And this is going to do a new 3D reconstruction, 
take a little bit more time uh, using a, a wider interpolation er, radius in Fourier space. And when it's done, it'll be filtered again, and, and everything should be nice. There we go. Uh, so now you can see the particles a little bit more localized in this, uh, in this very bad direction, and it looks uh, a little nicer in some of the other directions as well. Uh, and here's our, our reconstruction. So that's pretty much it. Now, any other interesting things we can do here? Uh, well, you'll notice that the reconstruction uh, algorithm, if we look here in this window, uh, actually correctly identified the slices that were incorrect. The slices marked with star were ones that were excluded from the reconstruction. If I find a better part of my uh, my image where it manages to do the alignments better in the, in the highly tilted images, then I would probably find that those weren't excluded. Um, how about looking at the missing wedge? Can we do that? Uh, let's see. So if we look at this window and bring up the control panel here, again we alt-click or middle-click on it, uh, you'll see we can actually display the Fourier transform of the image as well. So I say amplitude and auto contrast here. Now this is the Fourier transform in the good direction. Here's the Fourier transform in the direction with the missing wedge. And here's the Fourier transform in the very bad direction. And you'll notice the missing wedge isn't quite symmetrical here. And that's because we excluded the last 10 slices from the reconstruction in this particular case. Um, if I do the reconstruction again in zero mode, the fast mode, you'll see that the missing wedge will extend down closer to the origin after it's done. Uh, it hasn't updated, hang on. There we go. So you'll note that the missing wedge extends a little bit more towards the origin. Uh, so the, the, the higher numbered uh, modes in this, in this 3D reconstruction algorithm uh, extend our information a little bit further from the, from the origin by interpolating. Uh, and, and in some cases can give us a much, much nicer looking reconstruction. Now these other buttons up here uh, aren't useful in most cases. The Tomofill button is an option which is good for if you're looking at something like vesicles, say, and it will uh, try and fill in the missing wedge with sort of a best guess of, uh, of other information. It might work okay with, with something like a virus particle, but it's, uh, it's, it's highly experimental. Tilt axis is used in the case when you're not using an aligned tilt series, and the tilt axis may not be aligned along the, uh, along the uh, vertical axis uh, as it is in an IMOD reconstruction. Uh, so it will attempt to determine the tilt axis, and uh, you can always type a number in here. So 90 degrees is the default, since uh, that's what it works with, it does with uh, IMOD, works with IMOD. Uh, and that's about it. If you want to find, click on another region of the reconstructions, you know, say I want to reconstruct um, this set of blobs here, for example. Uh, I just grab another grab another box, and we'll see here. I can probably try my center alignment again, although it may shift it in a direction where I don't want it to go, because it really is looking for sort of one well-defined object in the center. Uh, let's try a different one. Let's try, let's try this. Let's see how we how we do with that. So you can see there's still a little bit of work to be done to really make this a, a perfect tool. Again, you can see it's it's losing the last few images in the tilt series. I suspect this tilt series that I'm playing with here is just isn't perfect. Uh, let's do a reconstruction of that. And then we'll see it will replace the existing reconstructions that we have, and we can see the shape of this, the three-dimensional shape of this blob that we've reconstructed. Uh, we can go through the reconstruction and see what it looks like. Anyway, I hope that was useful to you. Uh, it gives you a basic uh, uh, tutorial of how the features work in this program. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to uh, to email me directly about them.